What is up YouTube? Welcome to another build order guide. In this one, we're going to be covering the Malians. I have two different builds for you today. One is going to be Trade Boom, aka Stonks, Big Stonks. And the second one is the Malian Fast Castle. Now, the second one was pioneered by Salami himself, so I've got to give him credit there. I've just made my own adaptation of the build. It is very potent. You may have started seeing it on a few people's streams. Um, the fast castle into Farimba Garrison is very good right now, and I expect it to be even more dominant once the Marlin buffs come out very shortly. As of the time of this recording, the Marlin buffs should be coming out within 24 hours or so, but this build is really strong even before then, so give it a crack, let me know what you think, and we'll just dive right in, guys. Alright, so first off, we're going to put all our guys on wood. We're going to put one dude on the pit mine. It's going to build that. And what we're going to be doing is chopping a whole straggler tree with these five guys. And if you want to be able to, like, not have to worry about them going onto the next straggler, just right click the straggler and then shift click onto a sheep. So once they're done with that one straggler, <clears throat> they'll come across to the sheep automatically. So once this guy builds a pit mine, we're going to start building houses around it. And we're going to continue scouting. So if you do come up against Dark Age pressure in this build, the best thing to do is mostly just ignore it. Let them get a house or two. And then we're going to be building the defensive landmark anyway. So once that's built, they won't be able to bother the houses anymore. Another thing to consider as well is where you're going to put the landmark. So because we're going up with the, the trade landmark, but for defensive purposes only. You need to think about where you're going to put it so that the pressure doesn't push you off gold. So if you're up against like English or something like that, uh, you're going to think about where the long words are going to come from. For example, in this, in this spawn, uh, you can see that they're not going to be able to come through the front because the trees are pretty close. They're most likely going to come from this side or this side, and it's most likely going to be this left side over here. And this scout doesn't want to leave mine alone. So we're constantly rallying to food as well. <clears throat> and I'm considering just putting the land... If, you, if you're under Dark Age pressure, you're obviously going to be limited as to where you're going to put your landmark. So if you're under Dark Age pressure, you're going to have to probably just put it here. Um, you can't be too picky because if you go outside of the TC range, uh, the men at arms or spearmen or whatever it may be will come kill you. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going with like around 13 bills on food here uh, before going to wood. Uh, because most of the time, a lot of a lot of people are going to try and Dark Age rush you, assuming that they are a sieve that is capable of it. And once you have the food, we're going to build the trade network. It doesn't matter if it takes up a little bit of the slots on your gold mine. If you're under pressure, build it with around seven bills. If you're not under pressure, uh, build it with five. Um, and then as soon as that start being built, just transition five across the straggler. And then the rest can come on to uh, stay on food. So you just need the four on food uh, in transition. And keep rallying to food because you're not going to have the wood to build a mining camp yet. Uh, because we're going to be going on a mining camp here. If you're up against like English or someone where you think that they'll have um, archers in your base. In this particular spawn, I would literally wall off this side so they can't flank around here. Um, and then you can even like wall up here so you're funneling all of their units towards your trade network. We're going to start rallying to gold now. Um, and with this build, we're just going to be eating all of the stragglers. And then these guys are going to be coming off wood straight away. And once these guys are finished building the landmark, they're going to come onto gold as well. I'm going to do the shift Q uh, trick again that I mentioned earlier. So once they're finished with their straggler, I'll come onto food. I'm going to put a total of 7 on gold for now, and then I'm going to come back to food here. 
And as soon as you can, as soon as you age up, get the mining upgrade here. We're not going for our second pit mine at this stage because we're not going to have any units to protect that. Um, and once you've got the mining tech in as well, we're going to build a mill. And with the mill, we're going to be making cows. Um, basically, this is as close as it comes to being the safest fast castle you could possibly do. Uh, because you've got the defensive landmark here, you got safe food, even if you do run out of sheep. Okay, for some reason my shift click didn't work there. And then we're going to get the horticulture upgrade. I don't know what happened there. I should have the wood. Oh, there's still wood in this struggler. That's why. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. Actually, I'm going to run out of sheep soon, so I'm going to go for a cow first. If you have enough sheep, go for horticulture first, because that buff works on... I should have brought these back. I was busy talking. Because uh, the buff works on cows and as well as sheep. So two birds, one stone. Um, pop out your cow, start eating him. Cows uh, have a faster gather rate than sheep as well. So as soon as the cows come out, prioritize gathering that. And then gather the sheep. So horticulture coming in here and now as well. I'm actually not going to make my third cow here. I have enough food here. I brought back sheep as well. We're just going to go with the two for now. If we have the excess gold, I might make a third cow. But for now, this is it. Um, and generally speaking, people aren't going to want to pressure this landmark here. Um, unless it's like I mentioned, they have longbows or something like that, where they can, you know, outrange the tower. You need to be walling strategically to funnel their units into a certain position. So wall down here, wall up here. It, the same can be for like an archer sieve or something like that. Um, but if they're cav, like a knight sieve, like French, um, this is perfectly fine. You'll be perfectly safe with this landmark right here without any walls needed. Nonetheless, we're going to age up pretty shortly soon. I'm going to rally one out to Straggler now when I have around 18.7. And as you can see, we're going to have excess gold, but usually I use this build to allow myself to have up three cows. Um, and then once you have enough to age, just age up with the Frimba garrison behind your base. Take all but three guys off of, uh, off of food and take those guys under wood. And then start rallying guys to gold. Yeah, so someone's asking uh, against English is quarry better? Quarry is not better against English. You need the defense. I would never, almost never take the risk of going with the quarry in the fast castle build. Because as, as soon as you get pushed off gold with no units, the game's already over. So even if you think they're going to be greedy, I still think this is worth it. If you're not making any units and going a naked fast castle. And then from here, this, what you make here. I'm just going to pause real quick. What you're going to make from the Monster Quarry is going to be highly dependent on what sieve you're versing. And if you scout what the opponent's making against English, if you're up against longbows, go for javelins. Javelins are a pretty safe bet most of the time. If your opponent has a bunch of armored units though and no archers, go for Musafati Warriors. Um, and then once you've stabilized, you can start adding in different unit comps here. So I'm going to take all the guys off the landmark and go to wood here. Me and Primber Garrison. Yeah, I don't know what I said, but that's what I meant. Um, and now our objective is to just pump out units from here. Once we have the wood, we're going to build an archery range. And the reason we're building that archery range is so we can get the upgrade without having to do it in the Frimber Garrison. It, it's just like really inefficient to be upgrading from this landmark. Um, because at the time that you can uh, train five units is the same time it takes for an upgrade. So, so once you have... Uh, it's safe to go out and build houses on another pit mine do so um and then our objective here 
Yeah, so I messed up a little bit here. If you are going javelins, they're more expensive, so you're gonna need to uh, put a, more than what I put on gold here. So take some of the guys off the landmark and put them onto gold. Um, so you can afford the upgrade and the javelins here. But basically the objective from this point on is to get relics, secure a map control, and basically just go to your opponent's side of the base, pressure key resource points, gain map control, um, and all that good stuff. I'm going to build a barracks as well here, assuming like if you're in a matchup where Musa Fighter, you're actually going to be good. I recommend adding in a barracks as well so you can get the upgrade there. And then you can add in Musa Fighter now. Like I said, do a few more on gold than what I did in this demonstration. Um, so you can afford all the stuff. And then as soon as you have the gold, start collecting relics. Now, if you're up against someone like um, that is constantly pressuring you and you haven't quite gotten them out of your base and stabilized, just put a hold on the, the mosque and producing it from there. Just focus on getting units out, getting them out of your base and then set up for a counter push and then start training monks then. Um, now, one thing that makes this strat really good is once you have map control, um, raiding with Musafati in stealth mode is like really powerful. And that's basically the build order guys. So from here, um, an ideal comp, if you haven't already like done really well here, say your opponent is, has a really mixed comp, like spear, horsemen and archers or crossbows or whatever it may be. Um, the typically what I find to be the best unit composition for Mali, once it gets to like the mid game, like in a few minutes time is adding in so far, add it in so far, get both the upgrades here and make Jav and Musafati. Now, if your opponent is going heavy on spears, switch into archers over the javelin throwers because archers are a lot more effective at killing spears. Um, but overall, javelins are really good at killing anything else, basically. Um, but archers, yeah. If you're up against like Abbasid where they're just massing a bunch of spears, at mix in the archers to deal with that. Um, and sofas are really good meat shields. So continue to go out, get gold on the map, relics on the map, um, and go from there. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this build, guys, and let me know if you have any questions. Actually, I'll ask chat. Do you have any questions, chat? Uh, I'm happy to answer here, and um, if there's anything useful, I can include that in the video as well. How to counter it. That's not what this guide is, AHL. So I guess another thing I forgot to mention is once you, like, start getting excess gold, um, get all your eco upgrades. So, here one wood chopping, your blacksmith upgrades as well. Um, and continuously produce from here. Alright, so the opener for this one is exactly the same. So we're going to go straight onto wood again. Same opener. This is the trade build, guys. Um, in this first variation, I'm going to show you the full greed variation. Where basically you're just trying to boom up as quickly as possible. And the situations where I recommend doing this is when you're up against like China or something like that, but keep in mind you're gonna have to keep on scouting your opponent, see if they're going on stone and whatnot, to determine whether you go full into trade or you need to swap your plan and actually make units before you go ham. So in this build we'll be going for like three or four markets. Um, usually in 1v1s I go three. Three is typically a good number unless I see my opponent going like UTC song. Um, then I'll probably go like maybe four. But nonetheless, like the opener is exactly the same, so I'm not talking through these exact steps. 
We're going for the six houses around the pit mine. I'm gonna drop off sheep here. Yeah. Um, do not do this. I mean, you can if you want. If you want to go on super hard mode, you can do this on Arabia. But there's a few maps where this is better. Um, this this strat is actually gonna be pretty good. Um, and those maps are Altai, Hillandale. Um, those are the first two that come to mind. Pit's all right. It's a little bit harder to defend, but it, it's possible. I've done it a few times before. But we're going to go 12 on food here, and then we're going to start going across to wood. And again, so if there's Dark Age pressure, do what I said in the last build variation. Build the, the landmark close to your gold bone. But if you scout, or if there's no Dark Age pressure coming your way, you have two options, so you can either build the landmark on certain resource points to keep that safe, or you can start putting in the trade route. Typically, I prioritize the tr uh, the to protect resources over the trade route because the the extra resources that you get from the landmark as opposed to a normal outpost is pretty insignificant. It's not crazy. If, for example, you had like deer spawn on the backside next to your gold, which sometimes happens on Altai, then put the put the landmark right there so it covers the trade line and your resource points. Otherwise, I recommend putting it on like somewhere that actually secures secures resources here. So again, we're gonna go like five here, and in this particular demonstration i'm gonna put it on key resource points to be honest if i was in a game i don't know i'd be like 50 50 between protecting my wood line and food source here and putting it back on my gold mine and berries here but in this demonstration we are going to put it on our resource points so once once you start aging put four on food and the rest on wood i'm on and then as soon as you have 50 wood, build a, a lumber camp and move across from stragglers. And what I like to do as soon as I'm in transition, I like to send bills across to either side. So the the neutral, uh, neutral trade post is going to be on this side because it's not over here. But I'm going to start preemptively walling. Um, in, in, on a map like Altai, I don't like walling to trees because vills can chop through. I'm going to build a wall all the way across here. Might even look to build a wall here. This is assuming that you've scouted your opponent at this stage of the game and you know they're going greedy or like shortly after. Put these guys on wood as well. We're going to take one of these guys that was over there. Uh, across to the to the trade as well. That's going to build a market after building the wall. I like to secure the walls before starting to trade. It's just a lot safer. Oops. So one guy is going to build the wall here, and then the other guy is going to build a market. In this particular spawn as well, I would just build a little wall here. And maybe even build like a wall across here. You can delay these walls here if you scout that your opponent has no production. What's this scout doing, man? Just deleting the pillars of the wall. As you see, like, the vill doesn't start on the pillar. So he'd build this whole wall, come back to this pillar. And then walk back to this pillar, which is really inefficient. And once you have around a 15 uh, vills on wood, you want to take like, start rallying across to gold. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you the three markets. Um, so you're going to need one market here. This is a trade trick, by the way. Um, if you're not aware of it, it's really efficient. As far as I'm aware, I'm not sure if this is a bug, but as far as I'm aware, it's a game feature, at least for now. Who knows? 
Um, but basically the trick with this market is to rally the initial markets on the neutral side cross to the your own market on the other side and then shift queue it back to the trade post the neutral trade post i mean i delayed my my traders a little bit there just to demonstrate how it works um but you'll see i'll show you what it looks like here yeah. So start producing traders ASAP. As soon as you start getting excess wood, add in the, the towers. Because each time they they walk past this tower, they're going to drop off resources. So you can see market uh, traders have spawned here. They're going to pick up the gold straight away. And then they're going to drop it off over here. So it saves half a trip on all your traders that are being made. So we're going with three markets here. Um, we're building towers now keep in mind at this stage you need to be constantly scouting your opponent um these towers are like the pure greed version if you're up against someone that maybe added in a second tc and then started producing units straight away i would delay these towers and build military buildings instead so we're going to delete this tower so we can keep the traders coming trader production is more important than building towers um, and for example, if you scout your opponent, he went 2TC and now he's going into units. Like I said, don't build the tower straight away. Put that into production and then build, like if you don't have access to like deer or like in this situation, if you do go onto deer, bring like a bunch of the wood bills and the gold bills across or, and then start gathering the food. But for now in this demonstration, we're just going like full greed. Um, but yeah, basically in any sort of turtle game, typically speaking, javelins are a really good option because they have really long range. Um, and also they're, they're like, they don't get really scratched by, um, archers. So if they're going like horseman archers, go spear jav, um, with a pro with an emphasis on the jav, they're going horsemen only or knights or whatever, um, put more of a priority on the spears. Um, but like i've been talking through this and like forgotten a bit of production here and there um so like the trade boom would be a lot further ahead than it is um right now um but yeah as soon as you get the first trip of trade in just take all your guys off gold as you can see you're starting to get the gold already and what i like to do is as soon as like say at this point i scout that my opponent is making units I would trade some of the gold for wood, drop down a bunch of military buildings, pop out some of these guys, put them onto the food here, and then start producing like a madman. Obviously these houses are better put around a pit mine, but considering you're trading anyway, it's not the end of the world. Um, but if you can, just put it on around a pit mine. Um, and then just, just market abuse as much as you can early. To, to make sure that you survive this period of the game. That's the most important thing. Is just survive, keep making traders. Um, and you'll like getting uh, worse rates by trading your resources is not that important at the start of the uh, feudal age because like once it's, if, if you survive for another like two minutes here, you, you've won the game. Like the game's already over. Trade is really strong right now. So just abuse the market as much as you can or must, as much as you need to not as much as you can um and just start getting as many units out as you can um, but that's basically the build guys like as soon as you feel like you've survived the feudal age or you start getting like the excess gold that comes in go up to age three get the frimbo garrison um start producing units with all the gold that you have um and don't forget to keep adding in more production because you are going to have a, like a huge amount of resources and similar to the last video, just make whatever unit makes sense. Uh, make whatever unit makes sense in that particular game. Um, but typically, like, if you're untouched at this stage of the game, you can just mass Mutafati Warriors and just win the game. Like, no, even if they're, like, mass archers, just because your eco is so much better and you can produce so much more. Um, another thing as well, if you go into, like, mass Mutafati, you can do constant invisible raids. And as soon as they like start losing a bunch of bills, they, like the game's already over. 
But yeah, that's the build, guys. Um, I'm going to quickly show you another variation of where you go units first. Um, but yeah, we'll jump into that now. Alright, same opener, guys. All onto wood. And then start rallying to food. Gonna eat one tree. We're gonna do shift click across to food. So once they're done with that straggler, they'll come on the food. Um, and in this variation, I'm gonna be kind of talking you through adding in trade a bit later. Because not every matchup and playstyle of your opponent is gonna allow you to go trade straight away. Like it's very risky to do it against, for example, French or or English. So you, you want to be producing units before you add like invest so heavily into trade otherwise you're going to be screwed and pretty similar to before like in almost all situations i'll be going either pure jab or jab don donzo um like i mentioned before jab just really good uh at defending um so we're continuing to build the houses around the pit mine So these guys are coming across the food now that they've finished uh, the straggler there. We're going to finish the six houses, shift click him across back to our base here. And continuously rally under food here. Um, so the matchups where I consider delaying trade. Well, it's, it's pretty much all sieves, um, or at least most sieves. But the ones that I default to, to going for defensive, unless I scout they're going for a second TC, is English, um, French, who else? If I... Against China, I it's very like dependent on whether I scout that they're going for the 2TC song. They're going 2TC song, I go all in on the boom at the start. If they're going for a Zug new rush, I typically typically go, like, I prioritize um, an archery range first, so I can get the jabs out to defend um, a Zug new push. And if they add in horsemen as well, you're going to need to add Donzos. But it is very dependent on... It's very dependent on what you scout. So in all matchups, Top priority is to be scouting in the feudal age to know what you should be doing. Um, so once you have 12 on food again, uh, you're going to start rallying across the wood. And then as soon as you have the rest age, we're going to age. So in this particular case, it's different to what I did in the last demonstration in, in that I'm actually building it on the trade line. And the main reason is it protects a hunt here and it also protects a wood line. So this is like the dream spawn for a trade boom because you have, I mean, even more dream would be like the gold mine here, deer here and wood here. But this is, this is a really good spot for the, uh, the landmark here. So once you have the 50 wood, send across, uh, to a lumber camp. And continuously build um uh put bills on wood here for the time being once these guys finish building the landmark they're going to come back to food um our top priority here is to have enough wood for military production as well as um we're going to start looking at filling up a second pit mine because we're not going for trade straight away um i go for a, a more defensive economical approach with the second pit mine um and production I actually don't even know where my second mine is that I should be filling up here. And that's just me not scouting properly as I'm talking through this. But generally at this stage you want to have a second pit mine that you've scouted. And also you want to be, you want to have your scout going across to your opponent's side as you age. So we're building our first production building here. What we're going to start doing as well is we're going to start walling because we're getting prepared to trade we want to go for units obviously but we also want to be setting up for the trade while this is all going on 
So I'm role playing as if I'm against like the English. Um, I've sc I haven't scouted any stables, so I'm going for double double, double archery here. Um, and we're gonna start building our our pit mines here as well. So I've rallied. It's roughly 50-50 split right now between wood and food. We're going for two production buildings here. You can also start preparing to grab the deer here. So if you're up against French or anyone that's making cab for all that matter, you want to be starting adding the Donzo. So we're putting our second pit mine now full of houses. And you're just going to have to gauge on how aggressive they're being. If they're going all in, still concentrate on massing units over, over setting up your trade. But for example, if they're not, if they don't have a huge mass within the next minute, then start setting up trade straight away. And even if you're only setting up like one or two markets, um, that's, that's good to start getting the, the trade, uh, boom going. Um, so once you have around 10 on wood, that's kind of as much as you need, um, at this stage of the game, just because, um, it, it's a good amount to continuously build your pit mine houses, have two production buildings. If you need to, you can add in a third. Um, like for example, if they went all, they were going all in archers and then I scout that they're going for a stable as well. Um, I would just add in a racks instead of building this wall right away. I'm going to start, I'm going to look at start setting up trade now. So we want to wall all across the, the sides here. If we're in archer wars right now, I would actually look at adding in a blacksmith. And even if you're going full jabs at this stage of the game, you don't really need to be mining gold. But as soon as you're looking to add in the trade, that's when you need to put, say, like, five, four or five bills on gold here. So once this wall's finished here, I'm going to look at adding in a market. Hey, we're fighting the English right now. We're going pretty well in the skirmish. You just want to have enough for like two archery ranges of production and then start gathering some gold as well. So I'm, I'm going for blacksmith upgrades of plus one attack. If you're up against English in, in an archer war, maybe you could prioritize defense first. Um, <coughs> but archer attack is going to be better if, you know, he has spears or men at arms or whatever it is in the mix. If you're up against English and they're adding in men at arms as well, um, don't make Misafadi. I like to just continuously make jab and focus on getting a huge jab ball uh, because once you have enough jabs, like men at arms become less relevant. So once this guy's finished building the wall, I'm going to look at starting adding in the trade at this stage. Scouted, he's going for horsemen as well. I'm going to add in a Rax. And I'm going to start rallying more into wood now because we've we're, we're, we're got enough food for constant production from our archeries. So we're going to bring some guys across to wood. There's no exact build order in terms of macro split, guys, because it's going to vary, like, depending on the game that you're playing, right? So we're going to go for three markets now. And add in Donzo as well. This guy's finished building the wall. And just once you like get this constant production, you found the sweet spot. Say 13 is a relatively good number here. Um, then you can look at allocating more to wood and um, gold. This guy built this. Okay, there. And once you've done so, do the market trick that I showed you just before, rally to your market and then back to the neutral and start adding in the traders. Typically, if you're under a lot of pressure, I like to delay the towers here. 
yes, the towers are going to give you a lot of extra resources. Um, but you need to focus on not dying first. And we're gonna, now that we have the markets actually set up, um, and the walls set up, we're not going to need quite as much wood. So just take some of those guys off of wood, bring them to gold so they can actually afford the, uh, traders here. And then if you start to have a little bit of excess, then you can add in the towers. But that's basically it guys. Um, that's the general gist of making units before you actually make, uh, Add in the trade. If I was in an actual game here, I'd also have like this wall as well, and maybe the front side as well. Um, and then yeah, just con continuously build traders and units from this point onwards. Um, I've had a lot of success with this against the English. Um, on non-trade maps, the fast castle into javelin throwers is really good against English as well. Um, I actually find English to be one of Marlian's easier matchups now. If I, I don't think since I've like kind of got the hang of these two builds, I don't think I've ever lost to English since that. <clears throat> I could be wrong there, but generally speaking, it's a pretty good matchup for Marlians now. Previously, when like I was still experimenting with the Marlians, I didn't think it was that good. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, since I've kind of got the hang of these two builds, Depending on what map you're on, um, I find they work really good against, like, English aggro. Um, but that's the build, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you found this insightful. Um, and I'll catch you in the next one.